Hello and welcome to another Van Hack uh, podcast. Today I have Fabio, who is a digital marketer at WSI uh, in Toronto. Hi, Fabio. Hey, how are you, William? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. Awesome. Awesome. Well, let's uh, let's get right into it. So, tell us a little about your your background. You know, your story. Uh, what's your professional experience? Sure. Um, trying to make a long story short, I have a little bit over eight years of experience with all around marketing. So um, I tend to call myself like a full stack marketer. Uh, I have a bachelor's in design. So within those eight years, I transitioned from design to uh, digital marketing. And I've been doing pretty much a little bit of everything, like from conversion to marketing automation to landing page creation to um, print stuff to websites. So been all around the place for those past eight years. So. A little bit of everything, I'd say. Nice. Do you have like a special area that you focus on now or is it still kind of all over the place? Um, yeah. At the moment, I'm kind of focusing a little bit on inbound marketing, marketing automation, uh, lead generation, landing page conversion, that kind of stuff, which is kind of interesting because it ended up being the focus in my professional career since I got here in Canada. So that's, that's actually something interesting. I was already working with that when I was in Brazil, but mm -hmm. since I got here, things kind of shifted a little bit, but that's exciting. So yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Building the funnel. Exactly. Beautiful. Awesome. Um, cool. So wh why did you decide to come to Canada? Um, wh where did this idea come from? Well, I'd say that the idea probably, kind of came to me, I'd say maybe over eight, eight years ago or maybe almost, yeah, seven, eight years ago when I was still in college, I heard about the immigration process. Um, that kind of sounded very interesting to me because I felt like since I was a teenager, I always felt like I wanted to live outside of Brazil. So I want to maybe work abroad or not be in Brazil. That was kind of my main goal since I was, since I can remember. So when I heard about the immigration process in 2008, I was still in college. I was still uh, working towards my bachelor's in design. So I still had a long way to go. I was starting to work and doing interns and stuff like that. So throughout the whole process of, of working and shifting from design to marketing, a bunch of stuff happened. I started researching about the immigration process, um, started learning more about it. And eventually I was able to apply and, and luckily here I am. So it was a long journey for me, to be honest with you. Yeah. Wow. Eight years. That's a long time of, of thinking, planning. Yeah. So, um, did you come to Canada like before you moved? How, how was that? Yeah, yeah, I had already been here a um, couple of times. So I did my research, I visited, um, I checked out the country. I was here both in summer and winter just to see um, what it was like. Obviously the weather is a big concern for most Brazilians, but um, yeah, it was super exciting because I would say it's a very easy place to adapt to. So um, even with the cold, you get coats, you get you get um, heating systems. So we're fine. So it's, it's not a big issue. So I did a little bit of research, watched tons of videos, um, came here a couple of times before. So I did my research as well. Yeah, it sounds like you did a lot of research. <laughs> yeah, that's great. That's great. Good for you. And then you came uh, just on the on the, on the park, uh, PR visa, right? The, the old program, right? Just so. Yeah, yes, in, back, in, back in 2014, I was already, uh, had already kind of given up on the idea of applying to the Federal School Work Program because my profession was not eligible. So I was doing researches and reading CIC website and all of that. My profession was not eligible, so I started studying French. Hmm. So I thought about applying to Quebec, but it was a huge learning curve for me, like going back to school and learning French yeah. since I, had, I already spoke English. So... Um, that was a little bit of a turnoff for me. So back, I think in April, 2014, they announced that Feathers could work a program for 2014 will like double the amount of, 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 of knocks available. So from 25, it went to 50. So all of a sudden I was eligible. I could apply. So I just rushed with all the documentations and the paperwork to apply as soon as possible. So it was the 2014 program and my visa got issued in early 2015. Awesome. Super exciting. So let's get into the job search. I think that's the, the most fun part. Um, so you said your, 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 your visa in 2015. Um, when did you start preparing for the job search? When did you arrive in Canada? And how was the job search once you, once you got to Canada? Yeah. So my visa, to give a little bit of, of a timeline perspective, uh, my visa got issued early 2015. So I 
visited Canada in the winter of 2015, like early 2015, just when I got the visa. I just came here, visited, checked out, checked out the winter, see, saw how harsh it is. Hmm. Went to both Montreal and Toronto and um, got back to Brazil, started a new job, which was kind of crazy, but started a new job, started saving up money, saving, saving, saving. So I ended up working for 10 months while I was working in Brazil for those 10 months. Uh, in many ways, I'd say I kind of was still working on my LinkedIn profile a little bit, working on my resume. So kind of doing a little bit of a side project on my own, still working, was insane hours. And so when I got home, I was like working on certifications and working on LinkedIn profile, that kind of stuff. So um, when I got here in Canada, it was December 2015. So it's about nine months now. Um, just a little bit before I got here, I applied for a position. As you well remember, I applied for a position at Unbounce. I uh, went almost all the way through it, uh, went up until the point as I uh, where I talked to the CMO of the company. Unfortunately, it didn't happen, but it was a great learning experience for me. Um, you obviously connected me to the guys in Unbounce, were great people, I'm super excited about the company since I actually used the tool on a daily basis. So, um, yeah, so before coming to Canada, I did... Uh, applied for a couple positions. The main one I applied for, for the, was the Unbounce one, especially because it was uh, for Portuguese speaker. So I think that, if I'm not mistaken, like they asked me to go to on an interview with them like the following day I arrived in Canada. So that was kind of nerve wracking. Hmm. But so I would, I would say that I started preparing myself like probably two, three months. I started, I got my own Canadian domain. I started kind of brushing up my resume a little bit, created a website. So I did all yeah. the fun part. So just quickly, I think this, is a, this is a good tip, sorry just to cut you off here, but like the Fabio uh, Diaz.ca website, I think that a lot of people, they don't know, they don't, uh, especially, uh, you know, especially maybe developers uh, don't know this, that's a good thing to do. But I think, you know, as a designer and a marketer, uh, you know, if you're a designer and a marketer watching this, and of course a developer, make sure you have a website that is your name.ca or .com or .me or something like that. Um, I think it makes a big difference. Uh, sure. Maybe. Sure, .com and .com.br were both already taken. So I was like, I figured, why not .ca, man? I'm going to Canada. So. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. No so I got my domain. .br. No more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, that's a good transition. So I did that. I remember like the domain was like super cheap. It was like no big deal. Again, yeah, like so. $2. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Cool. Super exciting. Um, very, very, very good. Very good tip. Uh, pro tip there. Cool. So you get to Canada. You did, you did a couple of interviews. Um, and, and then so you're in Toronto. Uh, and, you know, how, how's the, how do you find the, how did you find the digital market, uh, digital marketing market in Toronto and how was the, like the networking and job search process for you? Yeah, I, I would say that the digital marketing market here in Toronto is amazing. If, especially I'm from Rio in Brazil. So if you were to compare like the Rio market and the Toronto market, Toronto is absolutely amazing. Probably, I don't know much about Sao Paulo, but if you were to compare it to Sao Paulo, maybe Sao Paulo is a, a little bit more mm -hmm. heated up if you were to real but when I got here I started searching for jobs like tons of opportunities tons of opportunities um, so I remember as I mentioned I got here in December started actually applying for jobs in January when I finally got my apartment and all that so I could just sit down do like my my my, my main um, nine to five work was like trying to find a job right mm -hmm. so I would say from January like the, the first weeks few weeks i started looking for a job i'd say i probably applied to over 50 jobs so as everyone hacker knows and everybody at this point who's probably watching this knows applying for a job in canada is a lot different than applying for one in brazil so you have to work on your cover letter you have to work on your resume you have to tweak your resume depending on the, on, on the job you're applying so it's a lot of work so once you apply like the 50 job positions then you work on a cover letter for them and you do all the, all those things hmm. it's it's, it's very demanding, I would say. Mm -hmm. So I did find a lot of, uh, of opportunities. I did get a couple of screening calls. Um, I would not say, I, I don't know about the, like the language barrier and that kind of stuff. I don't know if that might be an issue. I would highly recommend to brush up the English when you're starting to get like screen calls and that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. Because especially for working with marketing, which is a lot of communication, a lot of, you know, it's marketing, it's communication, it's, it's everything connected, right? So mm -hmm. if you don't speak like the best English you can possibly speak, uh, that might not be the greatest thing for you. That might not work so well for you. Um, mm -hmm. But at the same time, though, 
we do have, I find that we do have a lot of technical positions, marketing positions, positions here in Canada. You do have like a lot of SEO, PPC type of stuff, landing page, conversion, inbound marketing, which is what I'm doing in my company. So if you're able to find your niche, niche and you're able to go for that specific area, you might not necessarily focus too much on communication side of marketing, but if you focus on the tech aspect of it, if you do have experience with that, that's great for you. Mm-hmm. So, um, I found that it was hard. I applied, as I mentioned, like for around 50, I uh, created spreadsheets, I started putting the companies in emails and everything, dates I applied for those and all that. Um, and I, I had a little bit of a hard time getting feedback from people, like just getting screening calls and all that. I would say that I probably did three to four phone calls, which was like the screening process. Uh, which did not go so well. So that was a little bit nerve wracking. Once you're here, it's like, oh my God, am I going to get a job or not? It's, it's, it's not the, um, uh, the most fun moment, I would say. But mm-hmm. however, considering I did apply, um, I did have, before coming to Canada, I did have a HubSpot certification. Um, the job I got here in Toronto was actually the company reached out to me, which was completely out of the blue. Yeah, I, was not, I was not expecting that at all. So that's really cool. That was something that, that's something to keep your eye open and because companies do reach out for you. If you have your, your like, if you do like the guideline steps from LinkedIn, if you change your, your, your city to Canada, your country to Canada, if you do all, all like the, 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 the little steps you have to do, people will eventually reach out to you, which is amazing. That's really cool. Awesome. Um, so tell us about this position. How did you get it? They, they reached out to you and then you did an interview. Yeah, so the HR manager sent me a message on LinkedIn talking, hey, Fabio, uh, I think you've got great skills. Uh, are you really HubSpot certified? Because we've got a position here that you might be interested. I was like, at first I looked, I was like, oh, man, this can't be real. Because it was so kind of easy in a way. I wouldn't, <laughs> w- w- don't want to say easy. I, want, I don't want to give like the wrong impression, right? But Of course, you worked hard um, to get there. The way I, I, yeah, I, I had been applying for tons of other, other job positions, and I had was a hard, hard time getting feedback from people. But when all of a sudden this opportunity kind of presented itself like that. So this HR manager, HR manager sent me a message on, on LinkedIn. And she was like, you know what? I got this position, all that. So it was like, I I was a little bit skeptical at first. was okay. So can you send me the job description so I I can have a look at it? So she sent me the job description. It was pretty solid, like a real full time position. I was like, okay, sounds interesting. So, um, I think in about a couple of days I went over to the headquarters, did an interview, went, am- went amazing. Um, I got great feedback on my resume, like the whole structure and, and the way I put it together, which is awesome. Um, so I did the uh, HR manager interview. Then I did like the vice president of my, my area interview, which is my manager. Then after a couple of days, I did another interview with the vice president of the company. So in general, I would say it was three interviews. And they were very like straightforward. Like the process itself was very fast. Within a week, I was hired, so mm. it was pretty cool. That's awesome. Man. That's that's really cool. Like um, a week after someone sends you a message on LinkedIn, you have a job. Like that's that's so so fantastic. Shows the yeah. the power of having a good profile. It was amazing. That's great. Yeah, awesome. I guess so. so. Yeah. So maybe talk talk a little bit about, about uh, that hack and you know, like uh, how how we were able to help prepare you and, and, and help you uh, get to where you are. First and foremost, I'd say what was surprising for me, even back in December when I applied for the unbounced position, when I told you I was applying for it, you're like, in a matter of seconds, you sent me emails to people from unbounced, connecting me to them. So it's like in a heartbeat, you get access to people you most likely would not have access to if you weren't a part of Unhack, right? So that was amazing back then. Um, not only that, but I remember throughout the unbounce um, selection, I, I had to put together a little presentation about marketing strategies, that kind of stuff. You did have a look at it, which was amazing for me. Like all of a sudden you feel like, Oh my God, I have to do this presentation. I got so much stuff going on. If you're nervous about it, obviously you're insecure about your English and like the, the job marketing and the culture, everything's a little bit different, right? So to have someone actually have a look at it and put some thought into it. Okay. And give you feedback. That's amazing as well. And, uh, resume wise, you also, I remember you had, you had a look at it as well. Um, and also great feedback. Oh, Fabio, your resume is amazing. So go for it. I think you got pretty much, uh, um, what was like well underway. So having the ability to connect to such important people within amazing companies, like dream companies and all that is amazing. That's what's most, that was like totally worth the money for me, to be honest with you. So, um, even though I didn't get the job at Unbounce back then, 
it still was an amazing opportunity getting like to do like Skype calls with those people and being actually facing like CMOs and top notch CMOs and marketing executives within the uh, tech startup scene in Canada. As it's something I say to a lot of people, it's, it's been a long dream of mine for many, many years. Not like something I made a decision within a year, okay, I'm going to Canada. No, I like pretty much prepared myself throughout eight years of my career. I, did, I got my first um, LinkedIn testimonials in English, seriously, like over six years ago, because I kind of <laughs> knew at one point I would want to do this. So I, I, it may sound like a maniac, but it's, it's true. That's so it took me a lot, of, a lot of preparing and planning to get there. So... Um, to be, once again, completely honest, many of the tactics and, and, and suggestions you guys give to, to vent hackers, I kind of was already on my way there. So this is a great feedback when you're like, hey, Fabio, you got, you, you got this, man. You just go for it. You got the visa. You got your English all right. So you got your resume. Just go for it. But I think for me, like what was to totally worth it was like the connections and the immediate connections. Okay, Ilya, I'm interested in this. I'm interested in that. You just like a matter of minutes. You get so that's amazing. Cool, man. That's that's awesome to hear, and I think like it's it's great too for the for marketing. It's it's, a, it's a, I, I completely agree with you. Uh, the digital marketing space or the tech marketing space is is such a growing space in in, in Canada in general, and um, it is a little bit more difficult, I think, with the English. But you mentioned that a couple times. I think that's so that's true. You, you know, your English needs to be at a high level, and like maybe a developer or a designer uh, who doesn't need to maybe face a client or write. Uh, right, you know, information that'll be public on social media, et cetera, or on the website. Um, but I think once you, once you have that, uh, there, there's a lot of opportunities. Um, so it's, it's great to see someone having success. Um, sure. yeah, so Excellent. what, yeah, well, of course, uh, uh, and well-deserved eight years in the making. Um, Thanks. yeah. So what, maybe just to finish off, what tips do you have for someone who might be a digital marketer, uh, aspiring to get a job in, in Canada's, uh, marketing market? <laughs> sure. Um, I would say, as I mentioned, like English, prepare your English, um, which is not necessarily like focus on digital marketing, but uh, prepare your English, get like LinkedIn recommendations and testimonials in English. Um, do like the whole like 12 uh, step program from, from um, Fun Hack and you'll be fine with that regards. But in terms of digital marketing, I would say since the market here, I feel like the marketing is a little bit more specialized towards, um, as I mentioned, like SEO, PPC, landing page, that kind of stuff. Try to get certifications. You've got tons of online certifications you can do for free now these days. If you get like, uh, for example, AdWords and Analytics from Google, you get like HubSpot has tons of certifications. I was actually trying to renew my, my certifications like about, about half an hour ago. So hmm. um, work on those because that might be something that differenti differentiates yourself like within the rest of the people. Mm -hmm. If you manage to stand out, and I got hired, to be completely honest, I got hired because of one certification, one HubSpot certification. Oh, obviously, I did my own. I, I do have, how do I say, how do I say this? I do have my own credit for the interview process and resume and all of that. But what called um, the HR manager's attention within my resume it was like a HubSpot certification. So make sure you find those specific things you can, you can add to your resume, which might not necessarily cost you much, right? So it might be, might, might be free certifications and all that. So um, I would highly recommend keeping, keeping your radar open, your eyes open to all those possibilities, definitely. That's a, that's a great tip. Um, I, it's, I think as someone who's coming into a new market, um, no matter where in the world you are going into a new country, you know, people maybe don't know your work or you don't, you don't have connections and, and credibility. So a great way to add credibility to yourself is to, get a, a, a Hootsuite certification, a HubSpot certification, a Google Analytics certification, AdWords. Um, and there's you know, probably 15 or 20 more that I, I, don't, I don't know right now. Um, so yeah, that, I think that's great. And if you have that on your LinkedIn profile, like, you know, like Fabio, you did, um, that might be the difference. And so fantastic tip. If, if, if anyone out there, digital marketer, doesn't have a certification yet, go get one, uh, go get five, go get 10. Um, I think for developers, it's not so important, but actually for digital marketers, it, I think it does make a difference. So that's, it's great. Awesome. Cool. Well, um, Fabio, thank you so much for, for spending some time here with us, sharing your experience. Um, and if everyone, anyone's watching this before October 21st, uh, there's an upcoming event you might be interested in called the Van Hackathon. It will be a virtual hackathon where companies from Canada um, that are open to hiring from abroad or hiring remotely will be putting up challenges for tech talent to, to solve. 
So if you're interested in getting a job in Canada's growing tech market, go to vanhack.com slash hackathon and check that out. Uh, please subscribe, you know, like, share, comment, uh, send to all your friends, um, and uh, go to uh, vanhack.com for more information. Cool. Thanks, thanks so much again, Fabio. Really, really appreciate it, and we'll see you guys next time. Thank you, Billy. Really.